my friends and welcome back to the channel you're watching project dark knight horror and i am your host the dark knight today we're going to be focusing on ghosts poltergeists and demons we're going to take a deep dive into the world of the paranormal let's begin a friend in need For our first creepy case, we're joining a young man called Javier who lives in Argentina. Now, in the last week or so, I've been in constant contact with Javier through WhatsApp and, with the help of Google Translate, we've managed to communicate and, because of this, I have a much better understanding of the case than anyone else could. Also, Javier has been kind enough to send me extra footage and photos not on any social media platform. And let me tell you this, the case that you're about to watch is very, very creepy. So Javier was worried about one of his college friends called Antonio, who hadn't attended any of his lessons for days and no one had seen or heard from him. So one day, Javier decided to check up on his friend to see if he was okay. He walked over to Antonio's house and when he arrived, he started knocking on the door and pressing the doorbell. But no one answered. Also, to make matters worse, Antonio's phone was now disconnected. Javier was now getting more and more worried by the second. ¿Dónde carajo se habrá metido este? After a few minutes of getting no response and hearing no sounds coming from inside, a concerned Javier decided to jump over a wall and a fence to get around to the back of Antonio's house in case his friend was hurt inside. But... When Javier got to the back door, to his surprise he found that the door was slightly open. And so he went inside. What happened next was a series of very creepy noises, tapping and footsteps. Everything about the whole situation felt completely wrong to Javier. Even as a viewer, the sense of dread in the building is palpable like there's something in the shadows waiting for him with a threatening agenda. But, spurred on by the concern he felt for his longtime school friend, Javier continued into the building, one step at a time, into the dark. Watch. Eh. Toño, soy yo. Javier. La puta madre. Toño, soy yo. Javier. La puta madre. Eh. Perdón. 
Later, Javier commented, at this point in the video, he thought Antonio was pranking him. So, he played along. Also, he could feel another presence in the building with him. This was unlike his friend, and, as the minutes slowly passed by, the concern that Javier felt for his friend was being shadowed by another overwhelming and powerful emotion. Fear. And the fear was wrapping itself around Javier like a blanket, all-encompassing and all very real. Javier didn't realize it at the time, but something had noticed him too. And from the shadows, it watched. So Javier continued deeper into the building. Hey, loco! Soy Javier, boludo. Che, loco, so bojo. Ya fue, boludo. Vine a ver qué onda, cómo anda. ¿Estás bien? Che, loco, si yo vos salí. ¿Escuchan eso? Toño, la puta madre que lo parió. La puta madre que lo parió. So as Javier walks through the first door, suddenly the door in front of him slams shut. We now know that that's the room his friend was found in. Even at this point, Javier still thought Antonio was pranking him. But, like I said before, he also started to get scared and doubt crept in. That's when the tapping started on the door. Eventually, Javier gets fed up and kicks open the door, and that's when his world comes crashing down around him, and everything starts to make sense. No one had seen or heard from Antonio for days. His phone was now disconnected, and the paper with the words scribbled on it, meaning sorry. Because of YouTube's community guidelines, I'm unable to show you the unrestricted version. It is only very short, but to kick in a door like that, and expect to find your friend messing about inside. But instead, finding your friend like that must have been very jarring. I have to watch my words very carefully because of YouTube's community guidelines, but I've experienced something like this myself, and seeing a picture or a video 
will never prepare you for the real thing. The sight, the smell, it's something you will never forget. As Javier stood there, trying to regain his composure, with about a hundred things racing through his head, all of a sudden, a door opened in front of him. The same door that had slammed shut earlier. And it was the same door that someone or something watched him from behind. This door now stood silently open. Frozen with fear, Javier stood and listened in the dark, not moving. Something was behind the door. Javier could hear movement, but he dared not go closer. Our bodies come naturally with a self-preservation switch. That feeling in the pit of your stomach when something feels wrong. Or the hairs in the back of your neck that lets you know when you're in danger. It goes back to the days when our ancestors sat in caves in the dark, huddled around a fire, hiding and listening to all manner of creature and monsters out for their blood. We've never lost that fight or flight response and Javier's just turned on because out of the darkness, one word was spoken. The word that was spoken was a name, Javier. Javier chose flight and ran away as fast as he could. But just before he did, this time Javier saw it. Just before Javier ran away, something was seen looking through the window at him. Two bright eyes locked onto Javier. Also, it's worth mentioning that no facial features apart from the glowing eyes could be seen. The figure watching him was all dark. Another thing worth mentioning was that the window in the door was over two meters from the ground. So, whatever was behind the door, it was over six foot, taller than Antonio. That night, Javier called the police, and two hours later, he got back some news that his best friend had unalived himself inside the room with the door that he couldn't open. Five days earlier. Javier didn't understand. He didn't want to accept the fact that he'd never see his childhood friend again. He had so many questions and wanted something sentimental to remember his friend by. And so, spurred on now by grief and doubt, and the all-empowering quest to know the truth, Javier decided to return once again to his late friend's house to search for any clues as to why Antonio did this. What happens next is absolutely terrifying. Watch. Esta la pieza. Mierda. La laucha. Da un poco de, de escalofrío estar acá, se siente. Se siente una carga un poco pesada, qué sé yo. Eh, eh, qué mierda. La linterna. ¿Qué pasó? Mierda. ¡Eh! Hey, hey. ¡Eh! ¿Quién es? ¿Quién anda ahí? Mierda. ¡Eh! Hey, ¡Eh! Hey. ¿Quién es? ¿Quién anda ahí?
¡Hola! ¡Qué mierda! ¡Anda ahí la concha de su madre! ¡Eh, eh! ¡Eh! So the clip starts with Javier points into the spot where he found his friend. All of a sudden, just as Javier is mentioning the chill in the air and the goosebumps that he's feeling, the light flashes and then turns off, which is never a good sign. After a few seconds, the light turns back on and there, in front of Javier in the dark corridor, Javier sees a man walking away from him. In shock, Javier quickly follows the figure, who takes a left into a room. Two seconds later, Javier follows, and to his surprise, there's no one there. The room is empty. He then tries the light switch to no avail. Just then, the door slams shut in front of him sending Javier running scared. In all the commotion, Javier realizes too little too late that he's trapped himself in the bathroom with nowhere to go. Suddenly, from behind him, someone or something starts pounding on the bathroom door. And yet again, he sees the figure walking away from him and once again Javier chases the figure but when he gets around the corner the figure has disappeared. Javier doesn't know what he experienced that night or what he saw in the video peering at him through the window. Perhaps it was the spirit of a close friend permanently trapped in a place of his own choosing or Perhaps it was something else. What if the building was already home to something wicked? And what if this evil spirit, entity or demon dug its claws into Antonio and sucked all the life out of him? That would explain why he disappeared and no one saw or heard from him. And that would also explain why Antonio felt he had no other choice. As for Javier... I'm in contact with him and recently he told me something that really shocked me. In the days and weeks following the incident, Javier decided to move into Antonio's home. I couldn't believe it when he told me, but grief hits people differently. Maybe Javier felt that moving into Antonio's home would make him feel closer to his late friend, but... At least Javier is not alone. He's asked a friend of his to move in with him. And together, they're going to try and make contact with Antonio and record it. So, as soon as I hear anything, I will let you know. But, in the meantime, you can re-watch all of his videos and clips on his YouTube channel and TikTok account. The name is on screen. Javier is in a bad place right now. So let's try and cheer him up and try to make him smile by jumping over to his account and dropping him a comment or two. But don't forget, when you get there, to tell him the Dark Knight sent you. Thank you. The Diary of a Ghost Hunter Last year, I featured a well-known channel about a man who lives in a haunted house. The channel's name is called NM Ghost Hunter, and this is his update. Last year, I talked about and showed you a few of his videos. Today, we'll conclude his story 
and watch the rest of his videos because since then he's uploaded some more. There's a rumour going around that this channel belonged to another man who lived in Australia and then, for some reason, another man took it over who lives in Mexico. I can conclude that this is false. I found out through my research that it's always been the same man. Just different locations. In other words, the man has moved homes and the haunting has followed him. There isn't a lot of information about the channel owner's personal life, but I do know from my last video on him that he used to be a paranormal investigator and something followed him home and attached itself onto him. We know from the channel that it's not his house that is haunted, but rather he is, because we know of at least one house move and the entity followed. If you remember, the last time I featured NM Ghost Hunter, he was experiencing poltergeist activity in and around his home. His TV would rock from side to side violently, the kitchen cupboards and fridge would open and close on their own, and tinned foods, cups and plates would fly out of the cupboard and slam into the wall and picture frames, shattering the glass. Also, heavier furniture like bookshelves would be seen rocking and being pushed over. The entity was also able to turn on the water and electrics. Last time I showed you one of his videos that featured a TV that was rocking from side to side. And, even though he showed the whole thing, some people in the comment section said it was fake and he had some kind of device that would make the TV move. So, he recorded a new video of the TV moving but this time he recorded the TV from three different angles. Watch. Okay, so we got the TV going. I'm just going to show it behind the TV, there's nothing there. Oh, the TV is a rocking. Again, absolutely nothing there. No one back there. So as you can see, there was no hidden device that made the TV move. This was genuine poltergeist activity. Watch how the table moves in this next clip. The video is not sped up. It's running at normal speed. Watch.
it wasn't just the homeowner who was experiencing paranormal activity. His daughter would wake up in the middle of the night in sheer panic, saying that something would be moving inside of a closet. The closet door would open slowly and footsteps would be heard coming out. Also, on many occasions, his daughter would tell him that her toys would move, but he never managed to capture it on camera. Until now. Watch. What do you want? What do you want? What do you want with me? Come on, answer! What do you want with me? Not gonna answer me. What do you want? Did you notice every time he went closer to the teddies, it sounded like there was some kind of static interference? Also, if you listen carefully, there are other strange sounds as well in the background. Breathing and growls can be heard as if there's something standing right in front of him. There's something very sinister about the way the teddies' heads are moving. It's as if something is trying to imitate life. But... They are failing very badly at it.
at the moment. See, there's nothing back there. Since I last featured this channel, the activity has got a lot stronger and the sounds have got a lot louder. Last year the homeowner left a locked off camera facing the front door because he would wake up and find the front door wide open. Well, things have got a lot worse. I think it's time to double lock the door and maybe remove the key because a few months ago, in the early hours of the night, the homeowner manages to capture some very scary footage. Now, remember, this is the home of a family with two kids and two adults. From my emails and comments and from the video on the channel, I know that he has at least one son and one daughter living with him, but there could be more. So imagine as a parent how worried he must have been when he captured this. If you've got headphones, I suggest wearing them. But if you don't, I'll enhance the audio for you. So, listen carefully.
The amount of force that is generated by the poltergeist is amazing yet very scary. Also, the reason the homeowner now shows multiple camera angles is because last year a lot of people gave him grief about the static cameras. To be honest with you, I've seen this loads of times when stuff like this happens in your own home, especially in your kid's space. You don't think rationally. Your brain isn't thinking ahead about how people will perceive it. When it's happening in the moment, all you can do is record and hope for the best. So the homeowner isn't a paranormal investigator anymore. He hasn't done any paranormal investigating for over a year ever since this whole haunting started. And now just focuses on the activity in his home. It's been a few months since the homeowner has uploaded. That's because the activity starts and stops sporadically. It will lie dormant. No sounds, no activity, no taps or bangs or footsteps for months. But then, all of a sudden, one night, the activity just explodes back to life. Last time, it was because of renovation work, which has been theorized to set off paranormal activity. So I'll be waiting in the wings for when the activity wakes up next, which could be any day now. But if you want to go back and re-watch any of his videos from the beginning, I highly recommend it by jumping over to his channel. The name is on screen. Or you can go to my channel's homepage and click on the ghost Poltergeist and Demons playlist and watch all the channels that I've featured in the past, including this one, the NM Ghost Hunter. But do me a favour, when you jump over to his channel, drop him a comment or two. But don't forget to tell him the Dark Knight sent you. Thank you. The French Poltergeist
For our next chapter, we're back to France to join the TikTok account and the YouTube channel that goes by the name of Tristan. Recently, Tristan hasn't been uploading to any social media platforms. That's because he went away on vacation after getting advice from some professionals that told him to stop filming the activity because it was feeding the haunting. So, for almost one month, he stopped all posts and stopped all cameras and stopped recording in the hopes that the haunting and the paranormal activity would stop too. Et salut à tous, on se retrouve aujourd'hui pour une nouvelle vidéo. Après trois semaines, même peut-être un mois d'absence, on se retrouve pour une nouvelle vidéo. Du coup, je vais vous expliquer un petit peu la raison de mon absence sur TikTok. Donc en fait, après avoir suivi les conseils, ben vos conseils dans les commentaires de beaucoup, beaucoup, beaucoup de personnes et les conseils de certains professionnels, donc j'ai décidé d'arrêter de filmer en fait pendant... J'ai décidé d'arrêter de filmer pendant quelques semaines pour justement essayer de calmer les phénomènes. Mais malheureusement, rien ne s'est calmé. En tout cas, c'est toujours c'est toujours au même rythme en fait. Voilà, pendant trois jours, il peut rien se passer. Ça peut recommencer pendant deux jours. Ça va s'arrêter pendant quatre jours. C'est toujours au même rythme, toujours les mêmes phénomènes. Rien n'a changé du moment que j'ai filmé ou que j'ai arrêté de filmer. Donc donc voilà, le, le fait de ne pas filmer n'a servi à pas grand chose euh, cette chose est toujours là donc euh, je vais continuer à vous partager un petit peu le quotidien et je vais continuer à vous partager des vidéos donc euh, restez connectés pour ceux que ça intéresse But as you just heard even after one month of not filming at his home the activity still remained the same so he started filming again
journée, plein après-midi. For some reason, a lot of the activity happens around the toilet. Tristan's toilet flushes by itself. Also, there's tappings and knockings that can be heard on the inside of the toilet door. An apparition has been seen coming out of the toilet. And later on, you'll see a shadow figure appearing. Oh. Tristan lives with his girlfriend and their cats and before the haunting started he used to make videos on urban exploring and ghost hunting for his YouTube channel. It's not clear how many videos he made or if he deleted some but for the last year or so he hasn't done any exploring or paranormal investigation and only records the activity that happens in his home and recently the Discovery Channel have noticed Tristan's haunting and they've set a date for Tristan's story to be told on TV. But more on that later. This past year, the activity in Tristan's home normally consists of taps and bangs, chairs moving, cupboards and doors opening and closing and there's been an apparition of a girl spotted watching Tristan. Also, there's been that mysterious shadow figure. But recently, something else has started happening and Tristan has noticed it. Recently, for whatever reason, Tristan feels that the entity is trying to make contact with him. 
His bedroom door will open in the middle of the night and something starts tapping on his walls. This is where things start to take on a much darker undertone. Now, we all know what it could mean when an entity or spirit knocks or bangs three times. It's not a 100% guarantee, but it could mean that the entity or spirit is evil or demonic. What I'm trying to say is, for anyone watching this who doesn't already know, when an entity bangs or knocks or introduces themselves with three knocks, taps or bangs, it's usually a bad sign. Basically, it's a mockery of the Holy Trinity and the time that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, which was 3 o'clock in the afternoon. But, in the supernatural world, 3 p.m. is turned upside down on his head and it's turned into 3 a.m., which is when evil spirits are at their strongest. Watch. Je sais pas ce que c'est.
Dieu. The activity in Tristan's home is definitely more stronger. There have been many apparitions seen. We know of at least a male and female who like to watch Tristan. And there's also this. And so far, it hasn't left the toilet. But you never know. Whatever this is, it has its own shadow. And did you see the way it rose up? If it has its own shadow, then does that mean it can transform into a solid? Also, did you notice you could see a bit of it over the top of the shelf? Whatever this is, if we take the top of the shelf as a reference, it looks like it's about two and a half to three foot tall. Because when Tristan stands in front of the shelf top, the shelf reaches his torso, and Tristan is about six foot tall. And then, there was this. Avec un peu de chance, j'arriverai à toucher le fond et attacher ça à un brin cassant. 
Si jamais j'accroche au fond, le brin cèdera avant le corps de ligne et je récupérerai mes Personne ne sait Bah là je suis en train de me battre pour ma clé de diagramme et des chiffres précis. Whatever is happening in Tristan's home, it's definitely getting worse. It seems there are multiple spirits in his home. He's tried saging the house, which didn't work. He's also tried not filming and stayed away for almost a month, which didn't work too. It's now caught the attention of the Discovery Channel, who later this year will be featuring it on TV. But, if you can't wait till then, you can watch his videos from the start by jumping over to his TikTok account and YouTube channel. The name is on screen. But don't forget, when you get there, Tell Tristan the Dark Knight sent you. Thank you. If you've made it to the end, then I salute you. You've proved that you're a true fan of horror. So remember, if you're interested in ghosts, poltergeists and demons, haunted houses, random nautica and urban exploring, cursed objects, serial killers and strange dark mysteries, then Project Dark Knight Horror is the channel for you. I absolutely love all things horror and I'm so passionate about my channel. So, if you like what you see and you think I deserve it, then can you show your love and support by subscribing to the channel? I'm a true believer in good karma. The kindness that you put out into the world, you always get back tenfold. Because what goes around always comes back around later. So, by subscribing to Project Dark Knight and clicking the like button, you'll be doing a good deed for me, the Dark Knight and you'll be due a big fat lump of good karma. Also, if you didn't know, I've made a private group on Facebook which is exclusive and hidden from the world, meaning you can't search it or find it. The only way to get in is by clicking the link in the description section and I'll open the door for you. So, if you're a fan of horror and you love ghosts, poltergeists and demons and all things dark and twisted, and you want to be part of the horror community as well as getting to know your dark night, then click the link in the description section. Next, if you didn't know, I've made some merch. I've combined my love for all things dark and twisted with my passion for all things urban. And what you're looking at is the result. Remember, these have been designed and made by yours truly, the dark night, and they are exclusive to the channel. So, if you want to look cool, dark and stylish, then look no further. Grab a piece of Project Dark Knight history before it's all gone. Lastly, I want to say a massive thank you to my lovely Patreons who go that little bit further to support Project Dark Knight. Getting the views on YouTube isn't always a guarantee, and with so much competition, it's getting harder and harder to get by. But... With the support from our loyal Patreons, it's a lot easier and it means I can continue to make Project Dark Knight my full-time job. Some of the names on this list have been with me since the very beginning. Those names are Dawson Lip, Turtle Chief 9, Julie 6, Andrew M. Gross, Laura Rohde, George Lopez, Donna Sayers, D. Michael Smith, Catherine Murphy, Trumpet, Anna, KJ Majid, Honey Badger, Charlie X24, Christy Santi Steven, Seth J, Are You Voodoo, Anthony Sornoff Unwin, Jacob Wilk, 
Cynthia Glover, Kevin Snipes, Archie Kiriaku, Randy Templar, and Amy Platt. Thank you so much for your kind and generous support. And as a thank you, I will continue to share my content with you earlier than anywhere else. So, from the bottom of my heart to all my lovely loyal Patreons, and also you at home, my dear subscribers, because it's thanks to amazing people like you who keeps the engines running at Project Dark Knight. And always remember... You've been watching Project Dark Knight Horror, and I am the Dark Knight, signing off. Peace! Don't ever laugh as the hearse goes by, for you may be the next to die. They wrap you up in a big white sheet, from your head down to 